explore what it means to try and do things like search or work with tasks or collaborate with people socially in these environments. Also, we're looking at uh, you know situations like big projection screens, which are another place where computation is starting to happen where it wasn't before, or at least not explicitly. You know, obviously HDTVs and things like that are computers, but we haven't really thought about them in the same interactive context, uh, except for in gaming, uh, as we as we have the desktop machine or the laptop. So that a lot of you know. Critically, that, that sort of exception of gaming is one of the things that I think is going to also start to become the foreground as we begin to look for new interaction models for how we relate to content uh, and tasks and interaction in general in these in these spaces. Uh, and so, you know, with Bloom, the company that I'm sort of piloting around at the moment, uh, what what we're really focused on is is starting to understand how uh, we can use. A sort of an inherent literacy and complexity that we've kind of been repressing in this what we call the Web 2.0 era, where we had sort of a very a single shiny button that you could press that said you know like or buy or something like that, you know, and that was a, a very you know a very kind of atomic interaction. But it turns out that we have a lot of you know as games and our relationship with games has proved for a long time, we have the ability to become highly literate in complex dynamic systems given the opportunity to spend time with them and play. So play is a huge part of what we also think is going to be a core aspect of how we relate to these new computational paradigms. But I think that you know, play uh, is something that happens in our daily lives all the time and sort of in the real world, in sort of every context we're in, there's always a little bit of you know, kind of understanding what the affordances are. You know, what are the boundaries of the interaction that I'm having and how do I determine those things? And play is actually a verb that you know, really sort of uh, defines that moment of really beginning to test those boundaries. So um, this is a screenshot of the app that we, the first app that we've built, which we call Planetary, uh, and it's a it's a very immersive metaphor that you run on an iOS device right now, the iPad only, but it's coming to iPhone and various other platforms, uh, which takes a backend system, which in this case happens to be your music collection and presents it to you in a highly interactive metaphor, which is that of a solar system. So the thing that's interesting about this is that it takes a simulation model, which has a rule set that has its own affordances, understandings, um, and uh, sort of projects that back onto another a, 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 a set of um, objects and, and sort of data services that you understand from a very sort of um, kind of clinical way, but you can actually now uh, bubble those things up into playful circumstances that allow you to do a dynamic reorganization using a different skill set, using a skill set which is about uh, a very fluid interaction and about a way of um, moving through data that, that uh, is much more, in a way, relying on an intuition of the, of the model that you're inhabiting. And now, that, that's a word that I want to sort of pivot on to talking about AR, which is the idea of model and the idea that what we really inhabit, aside from uh, inhabiting space at any given time, is we inhabit a model of that space. And so what we can do with the way that we can now provision um, objects in the world that are digital objects, those objects can now be infused with a model. So if you're in a space, that space can now be sort of, um, you know, all of the different objects that are connected kind of seamlessly to one network resource, to one back-end system that's providing a model, can all be tied in. So say you have three or four screens in a room, there are 10 mobile devices, all of those things can be subscribed to the same set of tools that present the same set of information in, in, in a similar metaphor. So the AR is actually not coming to you through an overlay, a top-down projection of data onto the surfaces, but rather it's welling up through all of the connectivity that all the devices in the room have. It's sort of seeping in you know, through the seams to sort of build a seam in the in-between spaces that are digitally empowered. So you already start to see this happening you know, in objects like the Airport Express or you know, Apple in general now is sort of rolling out their architecture of AirPlay, which is about dynamically provisioning um, you know, hardware in the home, media hardware in the home with network services. So you can actually say, you know, there's that moment that a lot of people find, you know, somewhat magical when they're using iTunes, although iTunes really provides very magical moments, but there is the little drop down in the right hand corner that says, you know, where do I want to play this music? And you can sort of play it in a lot of different places. Sometimes if somebody hasn't used the right security, you can play it on someone else's music system, which is always also a surprise for everyone involved. <clears throat> so, you know, we sort of, we're moving through these you know, broader and broader contexts of what we use the word social to sort of describe how we can do these dynamic provisionings that are based on sort of identity uh, into, into space. And so we, you know, first we called it social computing because we were using identity and shared identity and the sort of trade of identity to provision computing that made it with objects. And now we're sort of talking about whole environments. And so those environments, you know, 
once everyone is bringing their own sort of cloud services into the objects of the environment, they become massively multi-participant. They're basically MMOGs that are layered on top of real space. And that has a lot of, you know, sort of implications in terms of how, you know, we, we have to be able to blend people's, you know, sort of preferences that they're bringing with them from the network into space. You know, if there are multiple people that have sort of provisioning profiles for what type of music should be played somewhere, you know, there has to be some way of resolving how those permissions work out, who gets to decide what the soundtrack actually is. And so those are some of the issues that we try and work out in thinking about all of these things. Uh, this is sort of a, a shout out to a project that I, <laughs> that I worked on a couple years ago with uh, my friend Terry Schindler, who's here in the room. Uh, this was a project we did with a, an amusement park in uh, Dubai. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we had a, a crazy plan, which was to build uh, a mesh network of uh, actuators and sensors that were actually going to be able to track uh, users through the park and uh, dynamically mediate the space for them as they went. Um, so we built, you know, we sort of built prototypes of these little tiny mesh computers that had servers and actuators in them, uh, sensors and actuators in them, and so we could actually, you know, build things that allowed them to uh, sort of move through the park and have experiences that were fluidly following them, or you know, have reaction, have experiences that. Uh, sort of multiplied their experience with another visitor of the park who had similar sort of provisioning uh, preference setups. So the thing that that was really interesting, I think, for us in learning as designers was that amusement parks, A, are sort of an interesting, you know, when you're talking about, a lot of times, uh, talk about digital services, you talk about the walled garden. Uh, amusement park actually is the walled garden, uh, which is kind of an interesting th thing to realize, which means that people are opting into the experience, so you can sort of use it as a playground to try and understand, you know, services that you might not want to unleash on the unsuspecting public. You know, the idea that you have an avatar that what follows you around as a projection in space is something that people might not be comfortable with on the street. <laughs> but, but at least in the amusement park, you can give it a try and see what the sort of reaction to that is. So we built a lot of uh, prototype applications that sort of, you know, were trying, helping, you know, helping the amusement park designers try and understand what the affordance is of having sort of dynamically provisionable objects in space, the idea that you had multiple screens in an environment or a projector on the ceiling or sound or you know, dynamic water elements. You know, how do you build applications that, that take a model, you know, which is maybe a game that's running in the background, which is about you know, Smurfs or who knows what, and, and like, you know, those, those types of you know, media elements and those interaction experiences begin to pervade the space as you move through it dynamically. And those are sort of, <clears throat> that type of experience, I think, again, you know, it starts in the amusement park, but it really potentially ends up on the street. The question is, what are the ethics and what are the politics of bringing it there? And I think that's something, again, I think Tish was trying to talk about that a little bit in her opening, and it's definitely, if you're not asking yourself about the ethics of the power dynamics of how these AR experiences work in public space, then you're sort of missing a step. So, <clears throat> so you know, our answer, the, the way we sort of swerve back into Bloom from talking about AFK is that, is that you know in all of these contexts that have different you know different models that you're running in um, the the object that allows you a handle you know a control onto these experiences a way in is what we're calling instruments so we're building instruments and in mobile appliances right now and instruments are ways of affecting change in a model and that model can then be applied back into space and so you know the, there are these sort of two ways that instruments get used one is as a sort of scientific you know, we're talking about quantization and understanding analytically, and another as a, as a performative word, you know, an instrument that actually is part of a virtuoso um, kind of performance experience. And so, you know, in the synthesis of that, you find these tools that you might, you might have on a mobile device, which would allow you to, you know, access information that's in the cloud that you have access to through, you know, whatever dy dynamic metaphor allows you to get to the patterns and structure and that information you're looking for and then provision objects in the environment with performances of that information. So if you, you know, want to take in that information and say, I want to share that, you know, a banal way of talking about that is now when you go into a house that now has an AirPlay, you know, say an Apple TV, and everyone has iPad and iPhones, you know, you get into the, the usual you know, evening conversation among friends is, oh, 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 I have a YouTube video I want to share with you, AirPlay. Oh, really, I have one too, AirPlay. So everyone's sort of like, you know, taking things out of their personally provisioned information environment and sharing it into the into the, 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 the context of the room. And so, you know, we're sort of looking at what do those, you know, what do those uh, tools look like? You know, there's obviously gestural starting from the Wii and then on to, you know, um, connect. And then, of course, I think we're just going to see an explosion of experiences built around that. Um, so you know how do you how do you actually 
uh, begin to think about what society looks like in, in, a, in a situation where everyone has the ability to you know, bring things out of their cloud and put them into the world onto media objects in the space. So, you know, there's there are a lot of opportunities. I think some of them very explicit interfaces that live, you know, that 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 sort of grow out of the gaming world and come into these highly reactive and highly immersive uh, media experiences. And then some that are sort of more on the other Ubicomp end of the spectrum, which are much more about you know sort of hidden affordances that are activated by gesture and voice that actually you know sort of only come forward when you ask for them rather than being sort of these game-like uh, immersive experiences but either way you know there's there's a whole spectrum of services to design that live in the space between you know the things that you bring with you and the models that you bring with you into a space and their expression in the objects that have been dynamically provisioned so a lot of what we're going to begin to see is both this kind of ambient effect of space where you know, um, you be, you, things begin to slowly change in the environment based on who's there, because they're bringing their own preferences with them, and those preferences are affecting the, the space passively. But then also people will explicitly grab handles, you know, uh, that, that give them affordances to do dynamic performance, to say, I really want this thing to do this right now, because I have these things that I needed to say for me. Uh, and so those are, you know, those are kind of the, 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 the kind of spectrum or the, the upwelling, you know, starts from these pervasive passive experiences and then is, you know, directed by people that have access to these instruments into much more dynamic experiences that result in communication or task-based environments or play uh, and eventually, you know, result in, you know, urban scale kind of cultural uh, contexts where um, things are being actively affected by cloud services on the network and the social participation of the people that have access to those services. That's the rant. <laughs>